On April 14th, 16 adventurous riders will journey 2,100 miles from Mobile, Alabama, all the way to Ontario, Canada. The riders will average 53 miles a day for 48 days on a self-contained, unsupported tour as they retrace the pathway to freedom known as the Underground Railroad. Dr. Stephen Thomas, director of the Center for Minority Health, says for many people, it's a rite of passage. Whether they ride from, uh, you know, from the East Coast all the way to the West Coast, uh, or this ride of the Underground Railroad from Africatown outside of Mobile, Alabama, all the way into Owing Sound in Canada, which was the terminus of the free slaves. Now you talk about the wind in your face, let's talk about Harriet Tubman, our true freedom fighter. She was able to bring slaves through the Underground Railroad, and the story is that she never lost anyone. So you talk about hardships, imagine walking the, the thousands of miles that constitutes the Underground Railroad. Imagine the people along the route that created safe houses. Mm -hmm. So my point here is that there is no amount of um, discomfort that you will experience on a bicycle that is greater than the discomfort, the fear and the danger of actually being caught and killed and lynched that the slaves experienced in actually walking the Underground Railroad. And it's that history that we must lift up, embrace across race. It is a history of freedom, and that's something that we can all uh, celebrate. I think as African Americans travel this route, they'll really come face to face with the heroes of the times, the black and white heroes, and they'll really get to know the Josiah Hensons, the Martin Delaney's, and the John Parkers and they can look at those heroes of those times and, and emulate them in their own, in this time. You travel along rambling rivers in the south through marshes and swampy areas. You get to encounter land between the lakes, National Recreation Area on the border of Tennessee. So you really travel the gamut from the deep south landscapes into the rolling hills and farmland of the central part of our, our route and then into the Niagara Escarpment where you get to view beautiful waterfalls on your way through Buffalo and the Niagara region in Ontario. One rider from Pittsburgh who plans to make the entire 2100 mile trip is Norm Peterson, a 39 year old registered nurse from the Hill District. Norm stays in shape by cycling two hours each day through the streets of Pittsburgh. He also has some good advice for anyone who rides in stop and go traffic. When you ride next to cars, Park cars especially, you want to make sure you don't ride too close to them like this. Because if they open the door, you're going to flip over the door. So it's always good to keep at least three or four feet away from the parked car. We have to uh, look at how our cities are structured so that they become more bike friendly. This battle between the bicycle and the car is one that the bicycle will always lose. And so we need policies that actually improve bicycle friendly pathways. And that's something we should be very proud of here in Pittsburgh. And the fact of the matter is I've had a bike pretty much all my life. And unfortunately it spends more time in the garage <laughs> than it does on the road. I mean, why ride a bicycle when you can drive a car? <laughs> um, Cycling is hard work. Um, you're propelling, your, you're using your own body and your own strength and muscularity to propel this piece of instrument. Getting on a bike was an easy choice for Mario Brown. Like Norm, the project director at the Center for Minority Health started cycling to stay in shape. Now, he too is in it for the long haul. Mario plans to join Norm for the entire stretch on the Underground Railroad route. I think the pill for me was that I could no longer play basketball every day. My knees hurt too bad. You know, jogging just seemed like too much work. And cycling just seemed like something easy and relaxing that I could do. You don't have to ride a whole trail. Um, you just get on the bike and pedal for as much as you want. Uh, whether it's one mile or ten miles, or if you want to really press yourself and try to do a lot. And it, it's really not that expensive uh, to do in terms of the gear that you need. You just get on a bike and start riding. A lot of times people think that, well, I have to look a certain way and I have to have the right type of equipment. 
it's just like when you were a kid. You just got on the bike for the pure pleasure and enjoyment of riding a bike and get out there and get some exercise in and you feel good about that. And I think that that's a starting point for most of us is that we don't have to be a Lance Armstrong uh, or anyone like that. All we, we can be ourselves, we can take our children with us, we can just get out there and enjoy the scenery. Let's get there. Yeah, pump it up. We're talking about the Underground Railroad. We're talking about having bikes, tents, food, companionship. We can ride in the light of day. So my motivation is, let's think about my ancestors and who have afforded me the opportunity to do the things that I'm doing today. If they could do it, certainly I could do it. Uh, the health piece is definitely an individual benefit, but the history component, I think, is the really compelling piece. I mean, it's more than just cycling. Uh, for me and for many of us, it's, it's really about connecting to our past and uh, make bring this thing to life. Um, so for me, that it, it's all part of the big package. Um, I get goosebumps when I think about it. And um, so I'm really looking forward to doing this. I'm Kimberly Easton. Okay, so maybe you're not quite ready for a cross-country bicycle trip, but you would like to sample a taste of Adventure Cycling's latest route. We'll show you the pathway to the Pittsburgh Connection when biking through black history continues.